Hello, I'm Tony. And I'm Art. And we're here from Gardenmasters with, with a Z. Z. Com. What type of plant are we holding here? Why, it's a fern plant. Today, we're going to talk to you about the five different types of ferns that we use here on our own property and what you need to do in order to care for them if you want to use one of these, and we'd highly recommend it. So, stay tuned. Type of fern number one, Boston fern. This is a Boston fern. Boston Tea Party? Boston Tea Party? No, not really, although I have heard that tea, you can water these with tea, right? Yes, my grandma used to do that. Yep. And she would have her leftover tea and she had the greenest, healthiest ferns. We're not saying to do that. We just know someone that did. But anyway, like all types of ferns, the Boston fern is a fern that requires shade. It requires moist environment. It requires misting. It requires humidity, right? That's correct. And that's why the misting helps with humidity. Now, it will take some sun also. Not You don't want to put it into bright sun. No direct sun, so right? So that is correct, Tony. But like most ferns, they don't like bright direct yeah. sun. You'll see that, well, the main thing is they're going to dry out really fast. And you're going to notice the foliage on the fern is going to turn a light green, chartreuse, whatever. They just are going to be stressed in the bright sun. Now, Boston ferns are most often sold in hanging baskets. This is a hanging basket Boston fern. And as you can see, the fronds droop gracefully in, in a umbrella type of pattern, which is why we like them. And they are most appropriate for baskets. If you have a basket that's on a plant stand or they but are mostly used for hanging on a front porch. I'm holding it by the hanger. And these are the most common hanging ferns that you will see sold in stores today, Home Depot, Lowe's. They all carry Boston ferns as hanging plants. Yes, they do. In fact, the most ideal location for these is under a front porch because- Under it? I think they should be hanging over the front porch, Tony. <laughs> I don't, they'll be, it'll be way too shady under the porch. Well, what I mean is under, under the, the roof, roof of, of the front, front porch. porch. You know, I don't know, but I sort of think that as, as, I think of that as kind of like a southern type of look, don't you think? I do. I think it is. I'm not sure. And they go great with wicker furniture. <laughs> it makes it very cozy. So this is your Boston fern, and Art's going to hang it on our front porch right now. Now, before I do that, Tony, I just want to say the Boston fern, it, you can bring it in and overwinter it inside the house. Um, we have several around. We have some around the hot tub. We have on the front porch, and they become messy, and the environment isn't perfect inside. So we just buy new ones each year. So it's up to you. If you only have a position for two of them, go ahead and um, bring them in. But many of you would not want to do that because messy is an understatement. They're very messy, but they do overwinter indoors okay and you may want to just do that instead of having to buy new ones every year so it's really up to you keep in mind the birds love boston ferns every year we have finches laying eggs this year we had in this particular one we had robins not crazy about the robins because they really pushed the, the fronds down and it just was overwhelming <laughs> overwhelming because those robins can have a chirp 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 when they feel threatened so, <laughs> so if they're on your porch and you want to sit out the robins are gonna make a ruckus <laughs> but 
the finches are no problem. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put it up. The hanging of the greens. Oh, that was our Christmas video. So when I water, I use a liquid fertilizer, you know, every couple weeks, um, lightly mixed. Um, they do like to be fertilized. Um, and I want to say that by the end of the season, it, these farms are going to be all the way down to here. Yeah, they really that's look when, beautiful. That's when they really shine. Yep. And here you go, the front porch with the Boston Ferns. Rather nice. Fern number two, the Kimberly Queen Fern. Kimberly Queen, that's a nifty name, isn't it, Kimberly yes. Queen? I wonder and where that came from. This one differs from the Boston Fern because if you remember, the Boston Fern grows down. This is an upright fern, so note the difference. These things, now I have had a Kimberly Queen. I do bring it in over the winter. Now, the last few years, I've planted him in a stump in the yard, and I have not brought him in. But I. The one before that, I, I brought it in and it lasted a good 10, 12 years. So they don't shed as much during the winter like the Boston fern. And they are very durable. These branches on it, they're durable. One of the other ferns we're going to show you is quite the opposite. Now, this Kimberly Queen. Again, it's a shade plant. Likes shade. Likes misting, likes moisture. And it likes, preferably, it likes three to four hours of morning sun. So, unfortunately, where we plant it, it gets the afternoon sun and it still survives. It not only survives, it looks great. It, <laughs> it really looks great. Crazy. So, this is where we plant this. You know, we had a tree here at one time. A big and tree. A big tree. And it died. What a shame. But you see the remnants of last year's Kimberly Queen fern in there. We're going to dig that out and put this one right there. And it's going to look beautiful. Kimberly Queens are good in pots too, right? Art? Because they're yes. upright. Yes. And if you plant a Kimberly Queen in a pot, you would want some type of spiller plant to come over the sides. You know, whatever that might be you know whether it's uh vinca vine or creeping jenny or potato vine or whatever ivy, whatever. ivy yep so we also kept a, two pieces of the uh tree itself they were hollowed out that's why the tree died because it was hollow in the center so out comes the weeds in this area we are going to plant some impatience patience shade it'll, plants another shade plant and it'll bring the color draw your eye to this area and you'll notice the kimberly queen fern type number three ostrich fern now why are they called ostrich ferns do you have well, any they, idea look it looks like an ostrich uh, like a nest in there. Actually, it reminds me of an ostrich's necks. Yes. You know, I don't know if that's why they're called that or not, but. But anyways, um, these are different from fern number one, Boston fern, fern number two, the Kimberly Queen fern, because those two are tropical ferns. Now we're talking about herbaceous ferns. Well, in now, the first two are in ground, the other two are in pots. Right. So this used to be called our fern garden because 
they have rhizomes and they keep spreading. They spread rapidly. So I want you to kneel absolutely. down and show how big this fern is compared to you, Art. So even in person, it looks bigger. <laughs> these do incredible during the uh, early summer, spring, summer, but they like water. So if you have an irrigated yard, these will last all summer. We don't have irrigation. We are on a well. So later this summer, as we get into later August, in the beginning of September, these are going to start turning yellow and they just dry up. And I want to add... And I want to add to that. Actually, we are going to be removing these from this garden because every year in August, might even be early August, it depends on the weather, they just start to brown and die and they really detract from the beauty of the garden because of that. So if you live in an arid environment or even in today's weather climates, you have droughts, these might die before the season is over and create an um, ugly appearance in the garden. But, you know, if you have a small area, a small garden or whatever, these are good when you keep watering them. So another thing I want to say about them is they have this crown at the base. Um, so this, the bottom of the plant, it's almost like a crown here like a bulb uh, you might see it on this one you know when they die back that'll still be there and in the spring it's very interesting when they start popping out of the ground they're very graceful um, they grow great in the edge of the woods if the woods have a moist area now we are moving them out of here because we have um, redone this garden and we have hostas and hollies and so on and so forth this one needs to trim, be trimmed back by the way um but they just overtake the garden they have a rhizome root that just keeps spreading and spreading and spreading so we will be getting the rest out and believe it or not we planted this garden a couple years ago we thought we had all of these out and they're just popping up you got to get every bit of them. Fern type number four, Japanese painted ferns. These are in-ground ferns that really have a unique look. They kind of have silvery leaves and um, they just really look nice in group settings, grouped together, and they stay small like this. Unlike the ostrich ferns that get this big, these stay relatively small. More like a ground cover almost. Like a ground cover. You can use these as sort of a ground cover, yes. And like all ferns, they like shade. They can take a little bit of sun. We have some in the back that have a little bit more sunny, but still not really much direct sun, don't you think? Yeah, Mark? I think that's pretty general for, you know, all ferns. They don't like direct sunlight. And these, of course, come back every year, and they aren't as finicky as far as watering as the ostrich ferns, for sure. They seem to stay up until most plants disappear for the season in our area. So, and again, a nice contrast to other plants and other foliage colors in your shade garden so these are really nice we really like them they make kind of a nice you know if you plant them into a cluster it really adds something to the garden um, i want to say if you just planted one it wouldn't have nearly the impact so i mean you could as you can see like tony was saying the ferns in the background are quite a bit double the size but they're solid green but these have a real neat interest. Just beautiful. Fern type number five, sensitive ferns. Some people call them creeping ferns. As you can see, 
they take over gardens very easily. This area used to be grass and these creeping ferns creeped down the hill and killed all the grass. So we just are removing them because of that. We're reclaiming the yard nowadays, reclaiming. So they really need to belong into the woods. Into the woods. Into the woods you go. Now these aren't as big as the ostrich ferns, but they're pretty tall. And they, look how prolific these ferns are. A great addition to a wooded area that's native and you don't have to keep the plants in check. So I'm Tony, look up there. Now, if you can see where they are now, that's where we want to get them to spread through the edge of the woods. So they are called a sensitive fern because you bump into them and they just it's it's like a toothpick. Yeah, I that mean, one just, just broke. That one just broke. And then but you gone. know what? I'm not going to cry. You know what? <laughs> Anyways, so I know sometimes and look down here. We dug all of these out. I guess we didn't get that little rhizome. <laughs> How did that pop up there? It was on the edge. Anyway, these are very, very beautiful. We love them. They don't die out early for lack of water. They stay green until, you know, until the end of the season. And like all herbaceous perennials, they die off and then come back. And when we were transplanting them, it's almost like transplanting sod. Just get your hands underneath and there you go. That's all there's to it. Very, very hardy, I want to say. You can't kill them. Well, maybe you can, but it's not easy. <laughs> ferns, ferns, ferns. More ferns. ferns, more ferns. More ferns. Ferns. Everywhere. Ferns everywhere. So, we've only introduced you to five ferns. There's hundreds of them out there. They are so interesting and especially in the edge of the woods, round the trees, you know, it's sort of like floral design. You know, most floral arrangements have ferns in them. Oh correct? yeah, correct. I guess yeah. they certainly do. Okay. That's the basic yeah. of an arrangement. And the neat thing I like about ferns is because they're like wispy and airy, which is different than a lot of other foliage. So it's a contrast in your gardens. That's correct, Tony. I love them. I really love them. So we'll keep using them, right? That's right. And, and we urge you to keep using the different types of ferns that are out there, especially these five types. You'll love them. Number one. Boston fern. Number two. The Kimberly Queen fern. Those two are tropical. Number three. Ostrich fern. <laughs> in the ground, not tropical. Number four. Japanese painted ferns. In the ground, not in a pot. And number five. The sensitive fern. Don't cry, Art. Well, when you just bump into them, they just fall over. <laughs> I like sturdy ferns, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, a, a neat houseplant fern, I just want to add, is a rabbit's foot fern. And someday we'll show you that. It, it's kind of funny because I just planted one. And the bottom of the plant has these little, I want to call them rhizomes, that are white fuzzy things and they come out and go over the pot and cover the pot and that's that's why they call it rabbit's fur yeah it's pretty rabbit's cool fur. it's pretty cool so experiment because as we've said before gardening is really just a series of experiments and you'll love it if you like this video make sure you subscribe to our channel and give us the thumbs up also join our free mailing list by going to gardenmasterswithaz.com forward slash subscribe or watch these other popular videos on our channel.